Today, my goal is to work on a machine learning project that would look really good on a resume. I have no idea how this video is gonna go, but I wanna give you a realistic look at what it's like to build a project completely from scratch, what I go through, the bugs I run into, how I plan, how I design, how I come up with the architecture. I just want this to be a more real video than some of the tutorials where I already have the code written and you guys know that I'm not really problem solving on the spot. Anyways, I think this will be an interesting idea. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments and let's dive in and build a machine learning project. So first things first, we need an idea. Now, when I generate ideas, I typically apply the following checklist. First of all, is this practical? Does it make sense? Is this something I'll actually use? Second, is this challenging enough that I'm gonna learn something and I might have some things to talk about in the interview, but not challenging enough that I won't be able to complete it? So I wanna pick something in that intermediate difficulty where I know kind of how to complete the project, but there might be a few things that I'll need to learn or pick up along the way, which will give me something to talk about in the interview. And then lastly, I wanna make something somewhat visual or at least very easy to use. So if I wanted to link to a website or if I wanna have just a simple app that someone can download, there's not a ton of setup steps and people will actually be able to use this project relatively simply. So with that in mind, the project I'm deciding to do is a sentiment analysis project for my YouTube comments. The idea is I wanna have a little UI where you can pop in the URL of a YouTube video it will analyze all the comments and give you kind of a rating and say this video had 80% positive comments, 20% negative, or something along those lines. So that's the project I'm gonna to try to build. Now let me show you how I'd plan that out. All right, so I don't wanna bore you guys too much with architecture here, but usually when I start a project, I'll just do a quick kind of mind map or a little diagram in my horrible handwriting, just so I have a general sense of the steps or at least parts of the project that I need. So you can see we have a front end here. I just kind of drew basically what I'm looking for. I want to have you know, a title, enter some URL, and then we're going to have some sentiment report where it's saying, you know, the percent negative, positive, neutral, etc. Now that's going to connect to some kind of API. The API is going to need to fetch the comments from the YouTube URL, run the model on those comments, and then return and format the result back to the front end. And then in terms of my model, to create the model, I'm going to need to find a data set to train the model on, clean that data, train the model with that data, test it, save it and then deploy and use it. Very, very simple, but you can see we kind of have three parts, model, API, front end. I think for this project, I'm gonna use Django. We'll see if that works in a second. And for the model, I'm probably gonna go with something like TensorFlow just because that's what I'm familiar with. All right, now let's start working on our model. Now to work on this AI model, it's actually one of the few times that I need a pretty ridiculous computer in terms of specs. Now, fortunately for this video, I teamed up with MSI and they sent me over their Raider GE78HX13V. Now, this is a CES 2023 award-winning laptop and is actually the most powerful laptop I've ever used. It has a ridiculous Intel 13th Gen i9-1390HX processor that has 24 cores, eight of which are power cores, meaning they can utilize Intel's adaptive boost technology and get up to 5.6 gigahertz. It also comes with an RTX 4090 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which means I can actually load and train these pretty massive machine learning models locally. Not to mention it's got a 240 Hertz, 17 inch, 16 by 10 QHD display that is true color technology. It looks incredible and I can game on it while I'm taking a break from coding. Now you guys might not know this, but one of the massive issues and concerns I typically have with these huge laptops is that there's not enough power to go to both the GPU and the CPU at the same time to run them at their full potential in parallel. Now this laptop actually mitigates that. It has something called overboost technology, which allows it to deliver 250 watts in parallel to both the CPU and the GPU so that it can boost up, hit those turbo clocks and actually utilize the full potential of the hardware. Now that's a great feature, but for any of you that won't be using the GPU all the time, you can actually toggle the discrete graphics mode, which allows you to optimize for either performance or battery life using the 99.9 watt battery that's charged by this ridiculous power brick that comes with this computer. Now, of course, this has Windows 11, full IO, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, Ethernet, SD card reader, audio jack, really everything I feel like I would need for a mobile workstation, which is how I'm gonna be using this laptop going forward. Regardless, if you're interested in this computer, you can check it out from the link in the description. Now, let's start training that AI model. 
All right, so I just got some boilerplate code running here just to test my TensorFlow installation and a really simple model. I'm training this off the IMDB movie review set, which is a really popular one that comes built into TensorFlow. Now it's not gonna be the best for our use case, but it will at least give me a baseline of how much better we need to improve the model and how much more data we might need to feed it. So I won't run through all the code here. What I'm gonna do is just train up this model and let's give it a quick test and kind of see the results we're getting so far. So the model is now trained. It's giving me a testing accuracy of 86%, which is not great, but let's just run some simple queries here to see what we're getting. So let's say, I love this video. Remember, it's gonna be sentiment analysis. Okay, positive, nice. I hate this video. Positive, okay. So a little bit of work to do here. Let's do another one. This is really bad, positive. Okay, so clearly making a few mistakes here. Back to the drawing board, let's see if we can improve this. It's been about an hour, and what I did is just downloaded a new data set that's a lot larger and closer to the type of content we'll be analyzing. So I got this data set here, it's called Sentiment 140 with 1 1.6 million tweets. I couldn't find anything on YouTube comments, so I figured I'd go with this instead. By the way, this is from Kaggle, they have a bunch of free data sets if you guys want to download them. Anyways, I trained up a model here, it took about 20 minutes on this computer, which is pretty fast, even on GPU uh, training here. And let's give this a shot and see if it works. Let's say this is a really bad video. I don't like it. Come on, give me negative. Yes, negative, okay. Uh, let's see, this is the best video I have ever watched. Positive, okay. This is okay, let's see what it says for that. Negative, all right, so that's not quite correct, but at least the other ones seemed okay. Uh, we could do another one. I really enjoyed this. Nice work, positive. Okay, so it seems like we're getting some decent results here. I can continue to test this, but I think for now, this is probably gonna be good. Next, what I'm gonna move on to doing is the API, because I gotta grab those YouTube comments so that we can feed it through the model. So I'm happy to report that I've made pretty good progress here. The next thing I wanted to do after getting that model trained was grab all of the YouTube comments from any given video and then feed them into the model. So I just wrote a script here with the help of ChatGPT that goes and grabs all of the public YouTube comments for a video given its ID. That's working. You can see if I go here, I have punched in one of my videos and we're getting all the different comments with all the emojis and all this stuff. So now what I gotta do is take these comments pass them into the AI model and get some kind of output or report. So the percentage positive, percentage negative, et cetera. Then I got to aggregate those. Once I have that, then we can go make a little API and a front end and we can hook this up so we get a bit of a graphical user interface for the project. So I'm happy to report I got pretty much everything I was talking about working. I set up a really simple Flask API that just takes in a video ID on a get endpoint returns all of the comments on that video. The one I chose had a bunch of comments. And then it gives you actually the results for every single comment. So positive, negative, et cetera, with the analysis of the sentiment. Then if we come down here and gives you a little summary and says, this is the number of negative comments, this is the number of positive comments, total number of comments, and then it gives an overall rating. So it's saying about 69% of the comments were positive. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily correct or not. I would think that the amount of positive comments will be larger. But I guess there's a bunch of comments where the sentiment is kind of unknown and it's probably leaning towards a negative there. There's probably some ways we can tweak the model and make it a little bit better, but for now I'm happy with this. So to quickly show you the code, get out of OBS there, you can see that I have one simple script here for my API that's simply calling to get all the video comments and then calls to get all the predictions, counts number of positive and negative, returns a summary, and then simply returns a JSON response. Now what we've got to do is hook this up with a front end. Once we have the front end, we'll have a nice graphical user display and the project will pretty much be done. All right, a few minutes later and we've got the front end up and running. I just made a simple input box here where you put in a YouTube URL. I then have the little summary here. So positive, negative, number of comments, overall rating. Should probably round that value, but that's fine for now. And then if we go through some of the comments here, you can see this one, for example, you don't really do a good job at explaining, negative. Okay, makes sense, someone didn't like the video. Continuing here, thank you so much for the tutorial, really appreciate it, positive. Now I went through and there is a few mistakes, like it's not perfect, but when I was trading the model, I was getting about 81% accuracy, and it seems like that's about the accuracy I'm getting on it analyzing all of the comments. 
Regardless, this is actually a useful project. It's somewhat functional, working pretty well as far as I can tell. And this would make a great resume project that I'd actually have quite a bit to talk about during the interview. I can discuss how I adjusted the model, how I collected the data, how I cleaned the data, how I connected everything with an API, made a front end, had a back end. Even though this isn't the most complicated project in the world, there was a lot of different parts that went into it. And that's kind of what makes a great project, having a ton of different things and showcasing your skill and knowledge across multiple domains. So with that said, I'll start wrapping it up here. I will mention that there will be a link to the code in the description if you guys want to check it out. And I will say that this was a nice change of pace and different video than what I normally do. If you guys enjoy it, please leave a comment and let me know. And obviously this laptop I was using was actually quite pleasant. I was a little bit worried that I was gonna be less efficient or I wasn't gonna like it as much as working in my big kind of office desktop multi-monitor display. But since this is a really powerful laptop, it felt pretty much the exact same as my big, huge computer that's like double the price. And since this has such a massive monitor, 17 inch screen, I actually found I had enough real estate. And even though it would have been nice to have some extra monitors, I didn't really think that I needed that. I could definitely bring this with me on the go and be close to as productive as I could be in my huge office kind of desktop PC setup. Anyways, I'll wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.